an agricultural system, what you want to think about is the complete system, including not just what takes place on the fields, but what takes place in the surrounding ecosystem. When the Europeans uh, first arrived in this landscape a couple hundred years ago, what they found was primarily a forested ecosystem, and specifically a forested wetland ecosystem. And what they did in order to make this productive uh, land for agriculture was to drain the water from the ecosystem. That, so in fact, this landscape, the water table in this landscape has uh, been lowered by about five feet. And uh, over time, we've lost about 90% of the uh, wetland ecosystems in this uh, particular region of the country. But in a larger sense, what we're trying to do in this landscape is to demonstrate uh, sustainable landscape use within a larger agricultural landscape. So how can we begin to combine agricultural production on the north side of this property with ecosystem restoration on the south side of the property. How can we begin to tie these different components of a sustainable system together in order to demonstrate to the larger community approaches to uh, uh, approaches to sustainable agriculture. We live in a bioregion and actually a country that at this point is running almost exclusively on fossil fuels takes about 10 units of fossil fuel energy to deliver one unit of food to our plates. And a central part of this transition to a more sustainable land use system is trying to wean ourselves off of that fossil fuel energy. And part of that is about um, using natural ecosystems, which naturally run on sunlight, and combining those with agricultural systems, which are designed to function to a much larger degree on sunlight than uh, conventional agriculture, which is extremely fossil fuel. Uh, intensive. Five years ago we were standing in what in the middle of what was a large soybean field. That process of restoring wetland ecosystems in this region of the country is on one hand fairly simple. What it involves doing is blocking off the exit so that water begins to um, accumulate on the land. So that's pretty easy to do. But then there's the process of bringing back the species diversity that existed here beforehand. Species diversity has been found to be an important controlling factor on the function of ecosystems. At this point what we've done is to intensively plant this region with native wetland species and then to prune out the invasive species, species like cattail, and then slowly begin to allow the natural native vegetation to come back. So what you're looking at here is uh, bull thistle. That's a native species. That uh, attractive plant back there is called arrowhead. Traditionally, the way farmers have looked at wetlands is sort of as the enemy to agricultural productivity. It turns out the biogeochemical activity that takes place within a wetland ecosystem is very effective at detoxifying um, uh, pesticides and herbicides. Wetlands are excellent sponges for nutrients. They are the kidneys of the landscape. That is, they function, they have that filter function, taking up sediments, trapping them. The really, the principal problem, pollution problem in Lake Erie, is not industrial chemicals, it's runoff from agricultural land. What you end up with is plankton blooms, and then that plant material dies, settles to the bottom, and as it decays, it consumes oxygen. And once the oxygen is depleted from the water column, it ends up damaging the species that we care about. Global climate change is an environmental problem that really dwarfs all of other, our other environmental problems and indeed all of our other societal problems. If we don't address the problem of climate change, uh, nothing else we do will, uh, will really matter. And so this issue of how to take carbon, which is the with carbon dioxide, which is the principal greenhouse gas, and remove it from the atmosphere and keep it from entering the atmosphere is really the crucial question for our generation. All of this greenery you see around you right now is taking carbon from the atmosphere, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and it's trapping it in an organic form. What wetlands do over time is they begin to accumulate organic matter in the soils of the wetland, and slowly over time that organic matter builds up. So they play the important role of carbon sequestration. 